how, how does this process work? Do you take your clients back into a trauma? Well, Are they um, reliving it or not? You have um, you can have physical wounds, but you can have also uh, mental and emotional wounds, and um, they can be irritated. You can scratch the uh, you can scratch them open, and someone else can um, peel into them as well. So when there is a mental or an emotional wound, um, it still has effect on you today, while the trauma has been uh, years past. So in order to heal that wound, you need to go to the moment where the wound got uh, uh, got created. Yeah. And that is very difficult. So in the past, we've talked about the shadow. And the shadow is something, um, everything you don't want to know about yourself or you don't want to show or you don't want to see about yourself, that is in the shadow. But also... Um, there is a cycle of the things that you know and you are aware that you know them and there are things that you do not know but there are also things that you are aware that you not, do not know them but there is also a part and the biggest part is that you are not aware that you don't know mm. so you do not know that you don't, don't know and that's especially where the, the, the shadow is and Often we have memories, we have uh, aspects of ourselves uh, that get repressed, emotional uh, aspect of that are uh, blocked, and that's where the wounds lie. So you take your clients, you confront them with their shadow, or you do it. Yes, this is what you do, right? Okay. So how then? do you do you like get them into this process because I, I can imagine that someone that comes here um, they might not they're not willing to to confront their shadow maybe they are, are willing to confront their shadow you know what I mean but mm -hmm. they it's it's blocked for a reason so you have to get them into there into that state right well it's interesting um, the moment that you realize that there's something going on you did that you do that by yourself so the the moment that you see there's something happening and I cannot see it or there's something going on and I need help, then they come to me. So they are open to, um, in generally, they are open to, to get confronted with the shadow. Mm. But um, there is also an aspect um, that is in Western medicine, um, you, the doctor gives you a pill and the pain goes away. Yeah. Uh, you go to a chiropractor and he adjusts you and Fixed you can... You fix you're you're fixed for like a week and that goes on and on and on so some people come to me with the expectation okay I'll just fix me for a bit and then i can continue on uh, but i go to the core of the problem that you have to do it yourself like if they come to you like okay you're gonna fix me um no that's how it works with when you go to a doctor or a dentist you just passive there passively and they fix you but with your practice, I've also done it. You really have to make an effort yourself in order to get to, to your core, to your problem. I'm not going to fix the problem for you. I'm going to show you how you can fix the problem yourself. And I'm going to give you the tools how to do it. Yeah, yeah this, this really ties in with... Um, I think I saw this uh, in a podcast you did previously with uh, Copy Collab, where you said, like, if I have clients here, my main purpose is to get rid of them ASAP, you know? So um, y you don't actually want to have them here for long. You just want to teach them how to do it themselves. It's a, maybe a form of meta learning, of meta therapy, mm -hmm. uh, so that they can treat themselves in, in, the, in the future. Is, is that correct? Yes. Good. Okay, I think we have a clear picture right now, like what the method is, uh, how you, you, get, you, you got here. Um, but I'm more curious, to be honest, about um, what kind of people do you treat? Like, what kind of people are those? Do you have a specific target audience or who well, comes to you? Um, the aspect of holistic means um, I work on all aspects of, of, of who you are. So uh, I work with the body, I work with the mind, I work with the emotions. Um, um, but I also, like, in your life as general, I work with relationships, uh, business, uh, leadership but also family aspects. Um, so there are the holistic aspects look um, 
um, actually explains I don't have a specific um, expertise towards one point. So I have many different clients. Um, some um, have physical illnesses, some have um, um, some have depression, um, some have blocked emotions, some um, were, uh, are, were suicidal and are still here. Um, so it's a wide variety of the, the people that can come to me. Sometimes I, um, I, fixed, I have fixed marriages, um, but I also healed people's uh, chronic pain. Um, actually once had um, a girl, of she was 14, and she had chronic pain for seven years. So half of her year she had chronic pain, which is like this nervous system uh, problem, like daily, for it was very heavy. And they went to multiple... Um, um, hospitals they went to multiple um, experts and doctors and they all said you're gonna have this forever and when she came to me I asked her like how does it feel like what does it feel like this pain and she said it feels like a, uh, like I'm wearing like I'm wearing wearing a backpack full of bricks uh. and eventually I found out she was very sensitive she was highly sensitive and she was very empathic so what that means is she felt all the pain and all the sadness and all the bad emotions from other people and she couldn't stand it. So she would try to take the pain away from them, even though she was like her battery was drained already. So I told her in her own language, um, you are carrying the bricks of other people. So in three months time, we single handedly gave the bricks back to every single one like the the guys who bullied her, her parents who were in a divorce, like they, she tried to carry that as well. So I tend to give it back. And some of these aspects she found very difficult to give back because um, she didn't want to give back the pain that someone else had. But I tried to explain her, um, if, if you take away something from someone, they're not whole anymore. And uh, their pain is a teacher, it's like a pain teacher. And if you take away the pain, they cannot learn something. So in order to give it back, they can grow, otherwise they can't. Just like this pain is teaching you something now, to yeah. get your own boundary and not take it over. Um, so in two months we gave it back, and the la well in two months and a few weeks we gave all the bricks back, and the last, the last um, two weeks uh, I told her to play a game. And I asked her, where in your body do you feel the pain right now? And she said, in my feet, in my knees, and in my hands. And I said, okay, close your eyes. And try to make the pain worse. And she was startled, like, why would I do that? And I said, just try it. So she closed her eyes, and the pain became worse. And I said, okay, so you have control over it. She's like, yeah, okay. Okay, now I'll make it less. So she closed her eyes again. And I saw, like, the biggest smile I've ever seen. Um, because... For the first time in seven years, she didn't feel the pain in her feet anymore. And eventually the pain got away completely. And uh, that's two years ago. And in those two years, whenever she feels a slight pinch of the nervous system poking her, she knows that she or took on some something or didn't create a boundary. So she works on that and the pain goes away again. I also have uh, uh wow by the way the and and the the like doctor said it wasn't treatable no they couldn't like fix that no and you fix that within how, how, three months three months yeah wow. that's why i want to look at a whole like what's happening inside of you because the body is telling you something you just need to listen mm. and another example is uh, uh, a client of mine who couldn't come to my practice uh, practice room because she couldn't she wasn't able to walk she had a a hernia and um, she couldn't get off the couch so um, I went to her and I let her lay down on the floor on the back on her back and there are certain minor movements that you're able to make um, in order to train the tiny muscles uh, to help fix the, the hernia and I did that and by talking to her, I got her into a form of catharsis, which is the shaking. Yeah. And when she started to shake, her legs would start to um, make this minor movement that looked like running. And I said, continue to run, continue to flee. 
and it became worse and worse and worse. Um, and it's, that catharsis took 15 minutes or something. She was running for 15 minutes. And when it went down, she shared uh, a memory that she forgot, which is she had to run away from her father. Uh, her parents were divorced and her father was chasing her because he was angry or something. And that memory was stuck so much that she had to flee from her father that, um, first of all, she repressed that. And she was a mother now for like 30 years. She had that same cycle over and over again that she felt that she had to run away from a situation, from a person, from whatever it might be. And she didn't do that. So she repressed the instinct, instinctive behavior we talked about in the, uh, earlier. Uh, so the muscles became so tense that it created like um, pressure on the discs and it created a hernia. And after this session, um, all the tension from that aspect was gone. So the hernia that she had for months already was healed in a few weeks. Yeah. Really? <laughs> that, that sounds amazing. That, that sounds almost unbelievable. Yeah, and that's why I guess... Um, I don't take anything home. <laughs> <laughs> That's good.